Today, we come with a new question. Of why is it so difficult to treat viruses? Humans have been battling viruses since before our species had been evolved into its modern form. A virus is neither an organism nor a molecule. Then what is it? Is it the most dangerous thing out there? Can we get rid of it? Open your eyes and enter the world of science. Curiosity answers. Welcome to Why Is. Viruses can cause a pandemic, but where did they come from? Viruses are microscopic organisms that require a living cell, often called a host where they multiply. They largely consist of genetic material, either the DNA or the RNA wrapped in a protein coat. Viruses probably have several independent origins, almost certainly at different times. One assumption scientists make when considering the origin of viruses is that each co-evolved with its host. For example, the herpes virus that infects humans evolves with time, adapting so that it will continue to retain the ability to infect human cells. If we consider that all life forms on Earth began in the ocean, then it's reasonable to believe that viruses evolved with their hosts in the sea. As these creatures moved onto land and evolved, viruses also evolved and gained the ability to infect terrestrial organisms. Earlier this year, scientists discovered the evidence that some viruses may be millions of years old and have been in existence since the first vertebrates existed. But this doesn't explain the origin of viruses. The ongoing discovery of new viruses, like Tupan virus, or a 30,000-year-old relative of giant DNA viruses, like Pithovirus, may allow for us to piece together the puzzle of their origins. Viruses don't leave any footprints, such as fossils, so no one knows when they emerged on Earth. The proper study of viruses and the infections they cause began at the end of the 19th century. But before this, the scientists knew very well of these particles, and they called them small microbes. After their discovery, viruses have taken their place in the world of science because of their unique structure. They are tiny particles of about 20 to 250 nanometer in diameter. We had not been able to see the viruses until the discovery of electron microscope. They have developed the ability to get inside specific cells of individual species and use the tools of the cell to create copies of themselves. In most cases, the cell is destroyed in the process and multiple copies of the viruses are released. They're classified with the type of nucleic acid they have, which are the DNA or the RNA, and whether their nucleic acid was single or double strand. They are the ultimate hijackers. They invade into living and healthy cells and use these cells to multiply and produce other copies of themselves. They can kill, damage, or change the cells and make you sick. Different viruses attack different cells in your bodies, such as your liver, respiratory system, or blood. They cannot function outside the host, which is why they're regarded as non-living among the scientific community. The more dangerous viruses are usually RNA viruses because they can mutate better than a DNA virus. Like the avian influenza virus and the hepatitis virus, RNA viruses are more feared because of their ability to infect people quickly and its ability to evolve very quickly. The reason behind this is that RNA virus is chemically unstable in nature in lab. It is therefore more prone to damage and mutations than DNA. Viruses are not cells and cannot divide. Instead, they infect a host cell and then attack the host machinery to produce identical virus particles. Viruses replicate, but to do so, they are entirely dependent on their host cells. They do not metabolize or grow, but assemble in their mature form. When they wrap themselves, they are called a virion. The virion can survive in the environment for a particular time and is capable of infecting a suitable organism when it comes into contact. Viruses are sneaky. They seem to have an electrical communication system with each other once they are in your body. They remain dormant in your body and wait until you are stressed, tired, or maybe just older. Then they attack your body. In return, when your body attacks to kill the virus, they will mutate. Yes, they mutate so that they become immune to the attack. The problem with them is that they're tiny 
and they look like nothing more than white capsules. I don't think scientists can even understand what the hell they are. They exist almost everywhere on the Earth, but cannot infect us until they find their host. Sometimes viruses can cause disease so deadly that it is fatal. Other viral infections trigger no noticeable reaction, and for some viral infections, vaccines have allowed us to keep germs from spreading widely. We've been able to eradicate only one virus, which is smallpox. But we are a long way from winning the battle against viruses. In recent decades, viruses have jumped from animals to humans and triggered sizable outbreaks by claiming thousands of lives. Here are the 12 worst viruses, which are representing a growing threat around a globe as we speak. 1. COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. 2. Ebola virus. 3. Rabies. 4. HIV. 5. Smallpox. 6. Hantavirus. 7. Influenza. 8. Dengue. 9. Rotavirus. And more. It's challenging to get rid of them. Viruses are a package of the genetic material enclosed in a protein capsid with attachment spikes and sometimes a phospholipid bilayer that the virus steals on its way out of the host cell. But don't worry, not all hope is lost. There are ways we can combat these viruses. Let me tell you about some. The most obvious way to combat viruses is to attack some steps in the viral reproductive cycle. Some drugs block binding and absorption, such as amantadine, which prevents the flu virus from entering the cell. In contrast, others prevent viral reverse transcription, so the virus can't reproduce its genetic code. The problem here is that you need to develop a drug that can target specifically virus-infected cells and inhibit them without doing excessive damage to our healthy cells. But viruses are using our cells, so it's hard to attack infected cells without also attacking our own. Viruses are picky beasts, and what might work on one virus might not work on another. An antiviral that binds to the active sites of flu spikes to prevent attachment might not link to the active site of coronavirus or rhinovirus. And an antiviral might be sufficiently toxic that we don't want to use it all that much. Interferon therapy is a sort of immune system released by virally infected cells that are sort of pass on the blueprint of their infectors to neighboring cells and allow them to tailor a chemical defense against the virus that took down their compatriot. But it's not entirely trivial to make interferon and viruses do develop resistance. So you don't want to use it every time someone comes in with the cold. But so far, the most effective way to combat viruses has been vaccines. They are our most effective way of reducing either the incidence of a viral illness or its severity. The issue is that there is something called antigenic drift, where the antigens on the virus change over time slightly. Hence, the more surface antigens change, the less effective our immune system is at attacking the virus. So often, we have to make an educated guess as to which particular set of viruses with a specific set of antigens will be prevalent in the flu season. So not only is it merely tricky to attack viruses as they are, but they're always changing too. And those changes make our defenses less effective. Hence why you need to get the flu shot every year. In any case, it's very much a sort of arms race, which will probably go on for centuries to come. I hope this video really helped you understand or at least have a glimpse into the world of the viruses. By the way, you know not all viruses are bad. Some are being used for some amazing technology and cures as well. Want us to make a video about them? Well, let us know below in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos.